The thing I see developers doing, which I think they probably shouldn't, is using composables outside of setup functions. So once you get into the mindset of thinking, a setup is where I invoke my composables, I get back useful utilities that I can use elsewhere, then a lot of things just start working. I would say ignoring hydration errors and issues, but okay, yeah. The, the other actual answer is, well, not maintaining reactivity. I see so many people using like refs, also make reactives, and they're not really sure what they're doing with like a dot value here and there, and maybe things that should be reactive, but aren't anymore because they use the dot value too early or in the wrong place. So it makes sense to check out the reactivity fundamentals and yeah, maybe educate them more like, what happens if I take a ref? drag it for different composables, get some results. That's really worth learning. The so thing that I have noticed in the view community is sometimes it's scary to change from the option API to the composition API. And believe me, it's a big change, but it's a great one because your code gets real good and it's easier to maintain in the long term. We have a lot of users for open source projects, but we kind of have a limited members of the team who is maintaining those things. I wish more people can help read through the, the guidelines of like contribution guide when you're contributing to open source project or like when you're reporting issues, I think it's better to know the issues better before you create it. For example, like you can experiment a little bit or like try to reproduce it with a bare setup and provide the reproductions when you create the issues. So that's where it's, it might actually solve your own problem. Maybe it can be a typo, it can be a misconfiguration before you need to create that issues. And it saves you time to say you waste the issue being replied by the maintainers. It's also like reducing numbers of the issue we have to deal with. And of course, I, I will also encourage you to join the community like Discord and you can help each other or can ask questions and people will help you as well. The common pattern that we see in the UI ecosystem is that many companies have their own design systems and many developers have been tasked with creating their own in-house shared library for their companies which requires a lot of work. So that's why once we see this pattern coming more often in our community, we created the prime view unstyled mode. With unstyled mode, the components are doing the heavy lifting for accessibility and uh, the main features so that you don't have to rebuild them every time. The idea is that uh, instead of writing your own library from scratch, which will take a lot of time, UI Compact uh, authors like us work on this full time every day to provide these accessible feature ready components for you. And the main difference is usually the styling, right? So you can easily skin these components out of the box. And in case you are planning to write your own UI library, we have guides and with the unstyled mode and tailwinds, you will be ready to go. You will be able to create your own library in no time. One of the mistakes I see people doing the most is putting too many things on the store. It's as if a Pinia store was really the place to put everything. The way I see Pinia is really as an extension of Vue. So you learn Vue first, you learn the composables, the composition API, and Pinia uses that composition API and tries to stay as close as possible to use philosophy uh, as it can. So things like using two ref or two refs inside methods, that's not how it works, or to keep reactivity, that's not exactly how it works, it's way more subtle than that. Creating getters or no reason or actions that are just set my state, like set uh, user, set card. You need to have to have some business meaning. Uh, even if they said just a state behind the scenes, you have to name it. You have to give it a name. Log in, log out that business meaning. Add to cart is a business meaning, etc. One thing I think a lot of people don't get right is they think the wrong way of applications or websites. They start from what the user sees, not from the backend. And in the case of Astro, or maybe even very applicable to Nuxt as well, is that you should start from the backend and think how I'm going to feed my application and we can start from the static side. Think of it as being a website and only add that sparkle of interactivity where you need it. And I think that's also very exciting about vapor mode that's coming to next, lazy hydration that is coming. I think it's a very easy pattern to learn. It just takes paradigm shifting. But I think once you'll understand how it works, your websites will get a lot more performant. The thing that we developers and not only we developers, frankly, like almost all the developers that are using single page application frameworks are doing wrong. And like, I don't want to be judgy, but you see that in the lighthouse course and generally they are making pages very slow. They are making pages very slow because the default, and really it's not their fault, it's how those frameworks work, 
the default way of building application is that everything is interactive. So you have a text node, it is an interactive component. You have an image, it's an interactive component. All of that requires you to download JavaScript, to parse JavaScript, which basically makes your application quite slow. So the way how developers think is JavaScript first, like interactive first. So what, for example, Astro is doing, what Wiki is doing is they're thinking static first. And I think that's the mindset that would be perfect for every UJS developer to have. Like let's make things static, like use server components, use, use Next Islands, for example, and make it interactive only if you need it. This way, the application will be fast. So I think the question should be about what should Vue developers do more often is simply thinking before coding. So like thinking about component architecture, how you want to send your data to your components, what it should do, how it should implement it. We are all developers. We have our code on our laptop. We just want to go straight in and sometimes we just should like step back and think about how it works. Two things I would say that Vue developers probably shouldn't do. One, stop using indexes as keys. It just don't do it. It's all, it all causes so many problems and so many bugs that you don't realize are being caused by that. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, I think there's a little bit of an over-reliance on vModel in Vue. It's not, not specifically vModeling like a text input, but when we start to vModel more complicated objects than that, we end up in a pretty tricky place. The common mistake I find when I look at Next Project is the misusage of useFetch versus $fetch. You need to use useFetch in your page component or the view components when doing the data fetching of it. But on interaction, like if you react off a click event or a submit, you need to use $fetch. UseFetch is made for the data fetching to support server-side rendering. And if you do only a client-side API call, use $fetch. One common mistake I see now is maybe a bit confusion how you should structure view-free components with script setup with a composition API, especially if you're coming from your two, you are usually still have it in your master memory to do it by data, computed in methods and life cycles. And some people will tell you to do it like this and some other people will try to tell you to, to do it like this. So I think it's very important to still group these logical units together so we actually have an overview about everything what you're doing. And I think there is no right answer if you should have composables in your signify components or outside. Personally, it just helps if everything is consistent the whole time. So if you choose to do it in a single file, just do that. If you decide to do it in a single file component, let's just do that. But a grouping is important. One common thing I see from some developers is when they run into a situation where they couldn't figure out how to do it using a public API on the first try, they instinctively try to console log the objects and then reach for whatever they find on the private view component instance and then try to just get it to work in whatever way possible. But sometimes this means you're using private APIs that's not publicly documented. So technically, they're not part of the API contract when we make new releases. So some of them may break in patch versions or they may change in minor versions. So this can potentially lead to unwanted breakage when we change these internal behaviors. Before you use something, make sure it's publicly documented in our documentation. Anything that's publicly documented we will follow semantic versioning, which means they will not break, not change until the next major version. So if you stick to that, you should be safe most of the time. If you find that the public API just isn't sufficient for your use case, usually that means there could be a better way to do it if you try to approach the problem from another angle. But if you just really can't figure it out, maybe the best way to do is to open a discussion or an issue. The result could either be someone actually helping you figure out the right way to do it, or we acknowledge that this is a use case where the public API really doesn't cover. And then we can think about, you know, adding a actual public API to solve this problem. So that, that would be how I would go about it. <laughs>